A calculated field was also known before in Power Pivot 2010 as measures. Now they're calculated fields. The functions, their purpose are the same. They're just different naming convention. Remember that these should be unique. They should be as mnemonically created, named, and very descriptive. Use the description section as much as possible. Explain as much what the content of this field or column is. Why? It will save you a lot of headaches down the road trying to identify and determine why the result of a field or a calculated column is not what it should be. This will help you greatly. So remember this one heavily. Don't forget that calculated fields can be of two types, implicit and explicit. And last but not least, how often they're used and where. Calculated fields are often used in value areas of your power pivot table or your pivot chart. This can heavily help you determine when to use a calculated field. Okay, that's it. Let's dive into the demo. Okay, let's go ahead and start Excel. Open a blank workbook. And let's head into Power Pivot. Let's click on the Manage ribbon button, which will take us into Power Pivot window itself. Let's click on Get External Data. We're going to be getting it from another source, in particular the other feeds. Let's click Next. And because I've already used this data feed, which is the Northwind open data source, it already pops up in there. I test the connection. It's successful. Let's click on Next. I'm going to be choosing the order details. I'm not going to be selecting any related data tables. I'm going to preview and filter. Everything looks fine. Click OK. And I click Finish. We have our rows imported successfully. And notice, there they are. We're going to run about and switch back to Excel workbook. So we're going to create a calculated field. Remembering that fields are values, since we're going to create a pivot table first, we're going to choose our external data source, which we already have, and open it in the worksheet. Here we have all our details. We're going to select the quantity, and then we're going to select our product ID. Notice that it has a sum. That's not what we want. We want as a row, as a product ID, and the same with the order ID. Notice, now we have the values in there. Once again, let's keep in mind, we want to create a calculated field. To do so, we have to go to Power Pivot and add a calculated field. We could do it either here at New Calculated Field or Manage Calculated Fields. When I click New, we're going to use the table name Order Details, and I'm going to name it Calculated Field CF sum of quantity. Here below, I'm going to indicate that it is a sum of quantity calculated field, and I'm going to head down to the formula. I'm going to type in sum, and I'm going to select quantity, hitting tab, and completing the parentheses. I'm going to select it as a number with two decimals, just in case and I'm going to check the formula. Everything looks fine. We can use a comma separator in case we need it further down. And we click OK. Notice that it's available now. Let's click OK. And it matches exactly to the sum of quantity we have already. Well, that's great, but it's just a duplication of the sum of quantity. 
you're probably already thinking that's really not that useful. Well, what can we do to add some more enhancement to this? We would definitely benefit from finding out how many rows each order has. Let's head back into our calculated fields and create a new one. This time, as you noticed, I chose a different approach and click directly on new calculated field. This one will be order count of orders, rows, order rows. I'm going to describe it is the count of order rows calculated field. Now we're going to use a different formula. Count. As you can see, it says counts the numbers in a column. We could also use count rows. For this, we're going to stick to count, and we're going to once again use the column name quantity. We're going to check the formula, no errors, and click OK. OK, notice we are getting adequate results. It says we have three rows, and that is the case. It matches exactly to what we are looking to do. So, summing it up, calculated fields are mostly used for values. And this is how you create them. Calculated columns. These should also be uniquely named within a table. Make it a rule. It'll save you a lot of headache afterwards. These are created by DAX and they can be more resource intensive. Why? Remember the context of a row, the row context. You are creating a column, but it is spanning across all the rows of a table in your data model. That's why it is more intensive. It has to calculate for each row in the table. It will also consume more space on your workbook, which will translate to a bigger workbook size. Now, keep this in mind whenever choosing between a calculated field or a calculated column. The placement. This placement can be in a different area of a power pivot table, whether it's a row or column, or the axis in a pivot chart. This will help you determine where you should be creating this value or field in your workbook. That said, let's go ahead and create a calculated column. Let's open Excel, a blank workbook, and within the Power Pivot add-in, click the Manage ribbon button, and choose from other sources the OData source feed. Scroll down and there it is, other feeds. Let's click the next button and from the drop down select a north wind odata feed testing it it is successful and now clicking the next button we'll choose the customers table we'll preview and filter to see if there's anything that we really don't need we're scrolling to look at all the columns and they seem to be in order and they will contain the data that we're looking for now we'll click OK and finish button. We have 91 rows. Everything is great here. Now we have the data that we want, in particular the contact name. Let's think this through. In a pivot table, we won't be able to get the data separately, so that means that the first name and the last name in the contact name will not be readily available. So we need to create it manually. Let's start by finding the location of the space in the contact name. Let's click Equal and leverage the Find formula. Notice that it tells us it's going to look for a text within a text at a starting position, and it's going to return non-value if we indicate so. 
So we're looking for a space. We open the quotes, enter a space, and we're looking within the contact column. Starting at the one position, and we'll return zero in case it's false. Okay, it's indicating that it's at the sixth space location. And if we count Maria, that is correct. The same with Anna. That's great. Let's name this column space location in contact name. Great. We have our first approach. Now we want to find the first name. To do that, we're going to use the left formula. We want to use the column name contact. So we cho choose that one. And we're going to use this column that we recently created. Let's see if we can choose it. And there it is. So we're telling it choose from contact name the number of characters indicated that we've retrieved previously in the space location. Now let's click enter. Great, that worked like a charm. It seems that all the contact titles and names are there. Notice. Okay. They are there. Let's reduce this column. And there we go. We are doing well. Now, let's go ahead and add another column for the last name. It's click equal. And this time we're not going to use land, the left. Why? Because we're choosing from the right. So let's go ahead and select right from once again the contact name. And we want, let's see what happens if we choose the space. Well, things are not really what we're looking for. It's close, but not there really there yet. Why? It works for Maria Anders. And we're going to do something else here. We're going to freeze this location by going into Design and Freeze. Notice. We probably jumped the gun and did that before we should have. We're going to do it here. Design, freeze. Notice. Now we can easily move across and find that Anders worked well. Why? Let's give it a good look here. It's choosing the six locations, but we lucked out because the space is located at the sixth location after Maria, and Maria Anders, her last name Anders, is six spaces. That's why it worked. It did not work with Trujillo, neither Moreno. So if we apply some math, what do we need to do? That means we have to create a formula that subtracts the contact name from the value we have in here. And that does the trick exactly. Great, we're making good progress. If we can name these columns, that would help greatly. Let's start there. This is the first name. Followed by the last name. They all match to what they should be. Now notice, we have a few choices that we can make. Do we really need to keep the space location here? It doesn't hurt us, but it's really not that necessary. So how can we fix that problem in the first column named first name? Let's copy this formula and go into first name. Notice that here's the previous formula. Go ahead and replace 
the space, location, and contact name with what the formula that is contained in that column. Great, that worked. Now let's try that in the last name. And replacing it. It's working like a charm. Now, cross your fingers. What happens if we delete this column? Will we get an error or not? There's only one way to find out. Let's delete the column. And notice, it's there. Gone. Everything works well with those formulas. Yes, formulas can get complex or grow, as you have noticed. But you can do that. Now, to the true test. Do these newly created columns appear whenever we switch to workbook in Excel? Now let's go into Excel and insert a pivot table. We'll choose our external data source, the L data feed, and we will do it on a new worksheet. We're going to call this one contacts, customer contacts, actually, to make it even more descriptive. Let's scroll down, and we have the contact name as before. Great. But let's go ahead and see if, yes, here we go. Perfect. We have the last name and first name. And now we can choose also if we want the full contact name in order for us to make those possible choices if we ever need to do them. This is how we create columns, calculated columns in advanced Power Pivot. Calculated field or column, which one to choose? Not an easy decision. You have to use a few guidelines that are listed below. It's not an exclusive list, so feel free to expand it to your needs. Choose a calculated column if it will be placed in a row, column, report filter, slicer, or if it's going to be used in a pivot chart. Lastly, even in a different area of a pivot table. These should give you starting guidelines, thoughts, and ideas of how to choose and determine if it's a calculated column or a calculated field. Once more, give it some thought and expand on it. Your needs might be different, but generally, I found that these serve as a good starting point and the majority of times help you determine if it's a calculated column or a field.